I'm Susan Steele Mahalan, and welcome to Artbeat. During this edition of Artbeat, we'll travel to visit two artists who have remained young at heart through their creativity. First, we'll visit a tower built by Phil Powell in New Hope, Pennsylvania, and then we'll travel to Buckingham to be with interior decorator Jane Ashley. I know you'll enjoy this show. Phil Powell is an absolutely delightful, elfin-like New Hope artist whose energy and self-sufficiency have enabled him to create the unusual and the one-of-a-kind throughout his life. His rustic workshop is tucked away behind his home and it is filled with tools of all types, raw materials awaiting his next project, bits and pieces of past work, and the warmth of artistic inspiration. He often collects first and creates a use for his collection later. You were an engineer. I started out, yes. And from engineering you went into furniture design. I had done it as a child. I had been uh, doing uh, uh, building furniture, mostly remodeling in those days. And then I just got into it. It was my hobby and I decided to pursue my hobby when By I was building. in the service. I was in the service mm -hmm. for four and a half years. Uh, I was drafted in the Second World War, and I decided while I was in there I didn't want to come back to engineering. But it, uh, Too dry. Yeah, so I tried my hobby, and from the day I opened, 1951, it worked for me. It just, uh, I never had to work again. Now you did a lot of one-of-a-kind pieces of furniture. Ninety percent was one-of-a-kind, yeah. Mm -hmm. That one chair I did with the velvet cushions, that I probably did most of that. I did uh, about a hundred of those probably. Now what period of time is this chair? Uh, the original one was done in about 1948 and then it evolved. I stopped making them probably in about 1975. What wood is this? Walnut. And, uh, and it's handcrafted? It's all handcrafted, yes. Most of our stuff was uh, done completely. Well, you know, you run the basic shapes through uh, saws things and uh, then you hand shape the arms were all hand shaped with a, a thing you call spoke shave. What were you really known for? What had you developed in the furniture line that you were known for? Your trademark? I, I would say that I was probably one of the first ones to explore the surface of the wood. Like Nakashima uh, was the first one to sort of like bring the natural look mm -hmm. of wood, you know, using that woody quality and the grain of the wood as being the main feature of the design. And then I decided to s explore the surface of the wood because feeling that the tree doesn't grow flat anyway, to just sort of reintroduce some texture to the wood. And the way I did it was starting to carve it and following the grain. I always used the grain. I didn't superimpose a design on the wood. You know, like I didn't decide I'm going to do a classical mm -hmm. shape like canthus leaf or something I would just follow the grain and explore it and Were you dig it out. Your own front door is a good example of this isn't it? Yes that was one of the first first pieces I did like that yeah I did that for an old showroom that um, we had up on uh, near the train station. Now and then who's I, we? Uh, th then by then I was associated with Paul Evans now he did metal furniture and I did uh, he wasn't doing furniture at the time, he was doing a, was a silversmith actually. And then he went into doing uh, other pieces, like sculptural pieces. But you did the wood. I did the wood. Mm -hmm. And I did the sh showroom door for that. Then we decided that he had to go on doing more, he had to manufacture. So we split up and I went back down to Mechanic Street and brought the door down there. You did a really whimsical piece that's totally different from anything you'd done in the past, the pink bench. What was um, this for? 
I just got an idea. Some customers that had a very uh, more traditional looking sofa of mine had uh, a soul, they had originally been down in Center City, Philadelphia, and they had a um, solar house built for them, which sort of postmodern solar house out in Phoenixville. And uh, I, the sofa then was uh, around a fireplace that was round. The architect designed the fireplace around the sofa, and then I designed this piece to be at the head of the little gallery upstairs uh, where the sun comes in, in later in the day. It's delightful. And that's why the sun mm -hmm. face is on it. And uh, I took the colors from what they had reupholstered the sofa in, the same colors. Phil, so we're in the third floor. Of third floor. And you have been building this now for many years. Why? Why did you, when did you start this and why? Mm, that's interesting. Uh, I wanted to get some southern exposure. I own half of that house that's in the front, that little house. And I wanted to get southern exposure. So before the house was settled, we had agreed that I could wrap this around to get all the southern exposure. So here. this is this is a tower. I mean, how did it begin? I know that we As can show that. We dug the foundation, mm -hmm. uh, a round foundation. But first I had added this little uh, rectangular addition, three stories of that, to the old house. And that was your beginning point. Beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I wrapped the tower around that, so I'd have a place to tie in. Otherwise, I would have tied into the person next to me, or it'd be right against their house so right there. So you would have yeah. killed their so, life. So I pulled that out and then built this around it. Now, you do every inch of this work yourself? That's become an obsession, yeah. I dug the foundation by hand with a shovel, poured the foundation, laid the block, cut it, and then every nail that's been put in this, I've put in. And uh, it's taking a lot of nails. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> and then I did it floor by floor. You build one floor, and for a w one winter, it was just that. And it looked like uh, one of those oil tanks you yes. see when you come out of New York, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, then I added the second floor, the next two floors I added the next year. And then uh, the roof, that same year I put the roof on. And I, I'm afraid of heights, so I did the roof from the inside. This is all done from the inside. I put the sheathing around about enough that I could lean over and put the shingles on all the way around. Then I put another row of sheathing on, lean over, put the sh shingles all the way around, then put another row. And then inside, I kept building my platform inside so I could just move it around and lean clever, over. Clever, That's I, your old I engineering trick. Yeah, and I felt that I was safe, you know, because I had that yeah. in front of me. But every s single shingle had to be cut with an axe by hand. Every shingle, because it had to be tapered because of the uh, conical shape. And you did that also. Yeah. It was, very, very, it was like a, excuse me, but it was like a very zen thing to just be doing it in the weather. You know, I did it in nice weather, and uh, it was very methodical, you know, just shingle by shingle, you lay it, and you do it, and you look around, you know, you're up there with the nice air. And well, it's great being here and hearing the New Hope steam engine and this hearing all these This is new, but sounds. it's great, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, sitting the here, tree, uh, this is a fantastic space, and it's not finished yet. You still no have a way, lot of, no. and you're going to put insulation in. There'll be insulation in there, and then I'll treat the the ceiling in some way. I don't know I how. Yeah, yet, yeah. Huh? No. That'll become much but it's later. a wonderful collection that you have here, and you're kind of doing the tower around it. I see your masks. Do you pick up masks on your travels? Yes, I do. Uh, masks or anything I can get. I find. Does get color is Japan, color yeah. what you're after, or uh, mood? No, uh, some example of their uh, ethnic art. Mm -hmm. uh, I prefer sort of folkish type art. It doesn't have to be specifically folk art, but... Well, for instance, I know you told me the board. This board is from a Sicilian farm cart. Correct. Uh -huh, uh -huh, and you've uh -huh. used not only the board... The, the iron the work I've used on the bench as you come up the stairs, at the, uh, the iron bars mm -hmm. holding the back of the bench were the parts that held this onto the farm cart. And then this Sicilian chamber pot this is, is uh, now holding your beautiful flowers. There it is. Uh-huh. <laughs> And then behind me, this is, is this a, an Indian, uh, I mean, a Indonesian uh, rice uh, uh, storage jar. And behind it, 
Uh, that's something I bought. It's a uh, tapa cloth. It's it's uh, probably from the. Um, uh, it's oceanic. I don't know which tribe. Anymore. And you carry these things home or ship them home? I ship usually ship uh, have one shipment done by by boat. Now the beam on the second floor. Where was this from? That's from uh, East India, but it was belonged to a customer of mine who sold Oriental rugs and in Chicago. And I was there delivering something to them, and I brought the uh, beam back. I traded him something. Little did for the you beam. know that it was going to be. The well, I knew. Did you? I had the idea for the tower, and I was going to incorporate it some way. I had no idea how I was going to incorporate it, but I was going to use it in the tower. And then on the second floor, the way you're doing the beams, they're all different. And they're going to be treated different. They're going to first be painted some, maybe the color of this. The background of that, that dull red. Mm -hmm. That's the color I was speaking of, sort of blood red, dry That'll blood red. And I'm going to then treat each beam, maybe put mirrors, copper pieces, stud it with like copper. Indian feel? Or Indian feel, mm -hmm. yeah. That closest to Indian feeling, yeah. Now, the second floor will be your dining area, kitchen. Dining, kitchen, living And yeah. this This floor. will be bedroom. This will be bedroom. And then your entrance, of course, through the door, but what's behind that door? Uh, that will be for guests? That will be a guest room and bath down there. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a lovely studio, too, and the wall is full of pictures and mementos yeah. from your past. Do you construct out there? That's where I make my furniture. And now I'm doing you know, maybe three or four pieces a year, and I usually start just about this time. I I should be <laughs> doing it right now. Right now, you <laughs> As should we be speak, doing yeah. that, yes. As we speak. And you developed this lovely sitting area outside the tower recently, didn't you? No, it, I've always used that area, but I just put the, the uh, floor down, the bricks down, to keep me out of the mud. <laughs> and the <laughs> little stream here. It's little so, stream so we pleasant. dug out. The, the stream was a natural stream that runs from a spring up the street and came through the properties to our property and then it dropped into the ground and comes out to the sewer. On so the you other rediscovered end there. it? We rediscovered it. We dug it out and put a fountain in, and uh, my neighbor has goldfish in it. Well, up here, you get the feeling that you're in a treehouse, but on the second floor, looking out through the branches, really, you've made this little. Um, little porch or deck, yeah, yeah balcony with, porch with deck. found mm -hmm. branches. Mm -hmm. It really does give you the feeling of, of a tree house. And there actually are branches from the property, <laughs> the tree that fell down. And this and magnolia tree must be beautiful in the spring. Wonderful. You can sit under there for about five minutes after rain starts and not feel rain. It's just like a big umbrella. Well, I know that you love to travel, and of course all that you've collected shows that. What do you have in the future? What are you thinking about doing in the future? Where are you going? Well, as long as I can travel, I want to travel. It's, uh, you know, it's getting more costly all the time, and I'm doing less work, so I'll probably be traveling less. But uh, I hope to go to India. I, uh, have you I've not had, been there? No, yeah. no. East India, I went again. Yeah. But uh, I had an aborted attempt this year. And, and with the trouble. And then po mm -hmm. they're politically very unsound, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you've been a New Hope resident for a long time. What is it about New Hope that inspires you or that keeps you here, keeps you coming I back? I think it's uh, mainly that there, you can meet people, you can go out to breakfast and you can meet people of uh, all sorts that you probably would never meet in your ordinary uh, living, you know. And sometimes you don't want to see the person anymore than <laughs> just that time. <laughs> well, but it but does you, you get a great input. You get yeah. a great uh, diversity of, of thought. And New Hope uh, draws a always lot of artists, doesn't it? Many, and, and uh, uh, in many fields. You know, even the business people here seem to be more uh, inventive than business people elsewhere because uh, it isn't the best place for making money. The, the it's a way of life. You have to consider a way of life. The artistic, creative yeah, way of life. Yeah. The, I know that there's a unique piece of furniture sitting down on your second floor that you designed, and it's beautifully done. And you'll demonstrate it for us, but will you tell us about this? Okay. I, uh, for a couple of years, friends of mine, an artist, Joe Crilly and his wife, 
who said they wanted me to build them a library ladder. And they were always joking, oh, I guess we'll never get our library ladder. You'll never do it. We'll never get one. So completely as a surprise last year, I came up with the idea. I saw this bicycle wheel, and I thought it was so beautiful that I bought it and decided to use it in some way. So I decided to incorporate it into the library ladder, because the library ladder should have movement. And they don't have a regular place to attach it like they do in mm -hmm. libraries where they have that ladder that right. has the little wheels that run. So the ladder has to be able to be portable. Well, most ladders are semi-portable. Right, and you they're, know, heavy. they're heavy. Heavy, yeah. yeah. And to be strong enough, uh, Joe's a pretty big man, to be strong enough it has to be uh, heavy, you know, in itself. So I decided to make the, the wheel and the bicycle incorporate the, with the ladder to make it, it does look run like around. Deschamps, doesn't yeah. it? I think he would love I, it. I, you know, <laughs> as you say that, I know the piece you're speaking yes. of. I think it's in the Philadelphia Museum, yes. as a matter of fact. But now, what wood is this? Because it's lovely. It's varied woods. They, they, um, they, as they age, they become looking more alike. But the reddish wood is a wood they call padoak. That's an African wood. The basic woods, the most of the wood in it is walnut. Well, now, how does it work? Well, you... I take that little wheel and I wind that down and then that in turn pushes the wheel down and raises the back legs uh, from the ground and then with the two handles you're able then to steer it around to where you want and when you get it there you wind it down <laughs> and then you go up pick your book put it on the shelf and I bet they were thrilled, weren't they? Them. Oh, they were thrilled, but surprised and thrilled. <laughs> well, it's a conversation <laughs> piece. It has to be. But I offered to buy it back from them, so they had no choice. <laughs> All right. I wish I had it. Yes, yeah. because it's lovely. Because I don't own anything of my own, as you can see. There's not, not, I don't have any furniture. Well, I don't have much furniture anyway. I had the chair without a seat in it. No, but most of the furniture I, I, I do on order. 90% I do on order. People who have talked to me about you, and people say wonderful things, and they always talk That's about your nice. philosophy of life, or just being around you it keeps them so up. What are your words of wisdom? Give us some words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Follow your dream, I think. Yeah. It's whatever That's it is. what you've always done. Yeah, I don't care what it is, yeah. And uh, I think if you, I, I, uh, here's what I honestly believe. Anything you do, in what you're doing right now, you're putting out energy, and it's being received. and. As soon as I started building my house, or as soon as I was in business, people started uh, coming to have stuff made, and I, uh, I wasn't that good, you know, that doesn't mean anything. It's the energy. It's uh, the receiving, the it's the beginning mm -hmm. of the energy. The You're putting out energy, and, and others people are receiving it. it. Mm -hmm. And I have that relation with all my customers. It's, uh, it's almost a love relationship, we're part of the family almost, you know, because it's uh, it's a, uh, it's a handmade thing, you know, there's, there's no price on it, I, you can't make money, uh, absolutely, forget that, you know, it's, it's more, it was love. more it was of love. an exchange, yeah. In 1955, Jane Ashley established...